For more than a decade, China has been home to the world's busiest container ports. They are densely clustered along the eastern seaboard and ship a wide range of goods to the global market, from smartphones and computers to clothes and household appliances. Shanghai alone processed 47 million TU last year, more cargo than the top 10 US ports combined. However, an old competitor may be quietly catching up. This year, Singapore unveiled Phase 1 of TWAS port, with the long-term goal of constructing a consolidated hub for the global shipping industry. The $20 billion terminal, which has been in the works for a decade, is expected to handle 65 million TU per year by 2040. We are moving forward at full speed, said Prime Minister Li Xilong, who launched the project in September. Lung demonstrated how automation had simplified what was once a physically demanding task by remotely lifting and loading a container. The berths, built on reclaimed land, will be manned by drones and driverless vehicles. Given Singapore's perennial and and labor shortages, the design is well suited to the city conditions. State's Chi Hong Tart, a senior minister of state for transport, told Parliament that focusing on technology was critical. If we don't stay ahead of the competition, others will steal our lunch. Twasport's opening coincides with a period of turmoil in the container shipping industry. This year, China's zero-COVID policy disrupted supply chains. The after-effects are still being felt throughout the system. A satellite image taken on April 19 showed nearly 500 ships unable to dock off the coast of Shanghai. The gridlock at sea was a direct result of a virtual shutdown of trucking following the lockdown. Containers piled up on the docks, and there were no workers or trucks to clear the backlog. Pegatron, an Apple subcontractor, was among those affected. According to a tech industry analyst, the temporary closure of the Shanghai-based iPhone assembly plant would throw gasoline on the raging fire that is Apple's supply chain. Soon after the shutdown, Pegatron and other iPhone assemblers announced plans to relocate some production lines to Vietnam, Indonesia, and India. Singapore could benefit from a shift to Southeast Asia. With a population of only 5.6 million, the city-sized country is unlikely to compete with China's gateway ports in terms of export volumes. However, the Malay Peninsula's southern tip has a long history of serving as the primary transshipment hub for regional cargo aggregating containers from ASEAN neighbors such as Vietnam and Indonesia. Approximately 85% of the incoming cargo is bound for other ports. Singapore is also an important stop on the maritime energy trade route, where crude oil is refined for China, Australia, and Indonesia. Notably, the port's location along the narrow strait of Malacca, a choke point for the oil industry, provides the city-state with geostrategic leverage. Singapore is also vulnerable to these choke points in the sea. More than 90% of the world's food supply is imported. Malaysia is the most important land-based supplier, but other items, such as frozen chicken, are delivered in shipping containers from Brazil. Tankers transport 70% of the country's natural gas, which is used to power its power plants. Singapore always looks at the world from a position of acute vulnerability. Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan said this year at a UN General Assembly side event, TWAS development began in 2012, two years after Singapore lost its stop port status to Shanghai. Constructing a megaport in anticipation of demand seemed like a bad idea at the time. China already had seven of the top ten ports and was funding maritime belt and road projects throughout Southeast Asia. Hong Kong, a transshipment leader, appeared poised to benefit from China's explosive growth in container shipping. However, belt and road port projects such as Malaysia's Malacca Gateway, which was built to compete with Singapore, have yet to live up to expectations. Large container ships bypassed Kuai Tsing's terminals and sailed directly to gateway ports like Shenzhen, leaving Hong Kong behind literally. In many ways, transportation is the poison chalice of terminal operations. It is less profitable than export-import cargo. It can pack up and leave much more quickly and easily than domestic cargo, writes Eric Johnson, 
a supply chain analyst based in the United States. The decline of Hong Kong serves as a cautionary tale for Singapore.